Hey guys. It's Caden. I thought I'd just make a quick little video about my hysterectomy. Just to give you guys a little bit of info, I had a total laparoscopic hysterectomy with bilateral cellopingo oophorectomy. And it sounds really intense, but it was really, it's really actually a simple procedure and it's one of the least invasive procedures that can be done. Basically, I had a 10 millimeter incision on my belly button and then three five millimeters around it so I don't know if you can see from this far away or like there's not good lighting but there's one right there there's one right there there's one right there and they're all kind of fading going away so the one on my belly button was sutured and then there's also one um, around my pelvic bone on the inside that um, was sutured as well because that's where they pull out the uterus stuff from don't you love how medically correct I am? Um, I got these post-op instructions. I think I got them uh, at my pre-op appointment. And then I also got this letter from my endocrinologist that she sent, that my hysterectomy surgeon sent. And it just states that I'm cool. So I had a consultation first and then that was good. And then we just talked about like what I had to do. And I had to go get, um, you know, some paperwork to, you know, send off to the insurance people and so they would cover it and we got all that settled and it took a couple of months and, you know, but it, it got covered, which was awesome. And then I had a pre-op appointment after that. We just sort of like went over like the procedure one more time and she sort of told me like the risks I was taking and all this stuff and just making sure that I knew what was going down. Um, and then after that, r immediately after that, I had to go downstairs, um, and check in, because it's like in this big hospital, so there's all like different types of parts in the hospital. And so I had to go downstairs, and I had to, I had to check in with the hospital, or like pre-check in, and so I like went down there, and I had to wait for a little bit, and, um, I had to pee in a cup, and then I had to get some blood work done. And I had to answer like a bunch of questions. And then yeah. And that was about five days prior to surgery. So my surgery was scheduled for October 5th at 7 a.m. So I had to be there at 5 a.m. Um, but I don't think like that. Like the hospital was open. But that like specific like check-in area wasn't open until 5.30 or something weird. <sighs> something like that. So... I, we had to wait and then I checked in and it was really simple. I just basically said my name and my date of birth and she was like, okay, cool. And then I went back out into the waiting room and waited for me to, my name to get called. And um, me and a couple other people got called at the same time. We all went and, you know, like we're all having different procedures. So it wasn't like anything, like anybody, nobody knew what I was getting. Nobody, like there wasn't an issue. Um, went into the room, got in the nude. Um, my grandma sort of gave me this good idea, was like take off your shirt first and then put the gown on and then take your pants off. And that helped me, um, it helped me cause I don't like changing like in public like that. So especially if I'm gonna be nude. So it just helped me stay calm and I was very calm the entire time, which was good. Uh, I was very zen and I was happy about it. Uh, I had to get more blood work though and I had to pee in a cup again and then I had to meet with like a couple of the nurses and the anesthesiologist and you know like the nurse just had to talk to me and ask me some stuff like when I had eaten and drank and stuff like that and the anesthesiologist just had to tell me like what is he doing how is he gonna put me to sleep all this stuff and um, so I had to talk with them and then finally I went back after 7 it was before 7 30 but after 7 and they wheeled me on back, and before they wheeled me, they that's when the dude put the anesthesia through my veins. And so that way I would start um, relaxing on the way there. And then I got there, and they had to put these little patches on my body to monitor, like, my heart and everything. And so they had to move the gown around, but I still felt, you know, comfortable. I was still fine, and then they put the mask on me. Um, whether or not those people were trans friendly, they were definitely respectful. I know my surgeon is insanely trans friendly, but, and so is like her office, although it is called like Women's Center for Surgery, so it's called Women's, and people look at me weird when I go in there, but I don't care. <laughs> I'm a man.
And, you know, but they were really respectful and they didn't say anything disrespectful or ignorant, so I was really happy with that. I woke up around 10. The procedure takes about two hours, but, you know, like, it takes time to get everything set up and ready to go, but, you know, so I was done about 10 and I woke up right away and I was cognitive. And so they were going to leave me in, like, the recovery room for about two hours but since I was awake and I was cognitive and I was asking about my private room um, they just sent me to it and they didn't send me to like a normal private room they sent me to like a it's like a part I don't know something it's some type of room where basically the point is for you to get out that day or like get out it's like a temporary type of thing so you can get out as soon as possible basically so they sent me out there and you know, while they were willing me there, the surgeon was talking with my grandma to let her know what had went down. <sighs> Got to the room, and I had to prove that I could walk, that I could eat without vomiting, that my vitals, um, vital signs were all good, that I could pee, and that I can control my pain reasonably with medication. So, I did all those things. It was really fucking tough to piss. That was the hardest thing of all. Just to let you guys know, pissing was so hard. Oh my god. <laughs> it was torture. I hated it. And I was like, oh my god, I need to do this. I need to go home. I want to go home. Like, And I couldn't do it, but I finally did it. So I was able to go home about 5. And they wheeled me down in a wheelchair to my car. And then I went home. So, yeah. Um, I also had to wear like this special like mesh underwear. And I bled for a while, for a couple of days, um, but that's over now, which, thank fucking God. <laughs> I re recovered really quickly. I didn't really take too much medication. I was fine. I was able to, you know, deal with it. You do wake up with an ice pack on your um, abdomen, and you just, you know, keep it for at least 20, 40, 48 hours, um, you know, to help with the swelling, or if you feel any pain and stuff, uh, it's to help you out. <sighs> um, I do have pictures of it, um, but I, I don't think I'm going to show you guys, because they're pretty, um, intense, but, I mean, it's cool. I've never seen, uh, a uterus, um, a 3D realistic, like, real life picture of one. I've only seen, like, illustrations, so it was pretty dope to see that. Um, there's no real restrictions. They tell you to walk so you, that you don't, um, get any, uh, blood clots in your legs. Um, so try to walk a little bit. Um, the more activity you have, you are going to see some spotting. Uh, try to just take it slow and ease it all through. Um, don't drive if you're uncomfortable. Um, basically the only real restrictions that you have is don't do anything if it hurts. Don't get anything inside of your body for at least two weeks, and don't wash your incisions directly. Don't put any cream on your incisions. So, yeah, you know, it's really simple. It's easy procedure. It was a quick recovery for me. Um, the only thing is that uh, I did push myself. I recovered quick, and I was fine, and then I decided to work out. And I actually overdid it on my body, on that part of my body, on my legs and my core. And I ended up hurting myself. Um, not bad, it was just I was in pain and um, I bled a little bit. Did I bleed? Yeah, I bled a little bit. Which sucked, but you know, you live and you learn. And now I know better. I know not to push myself. Um, but it didn't hurt when I was doing it, so um, yeah. But yeah, um, I don't know if I said that I got this nifty thing. Um, after surgery to blow into to open up my airways um, because your lungs close up when you go under anesthesia so that was cool it really helped me out and I think it's gonna help me out with um, top surgery and stuff like that so yeah I'm gonna use it for that because that thing's cool um, and it helps me with breathing and have problems with that anyway so um, if you guys have any questions about it or if you guys want me to get in depth about this thing or that thing uh let me know in the comments below all my infos down there and i'll see you guys next time peace out